Today we're writing code in Go to create books in the EPUB book format. This will let us write choose your own adventure style interactive fiction stories that can be published in the Kindle marketplace. Previously, we built a parser that would parse this markdown style syntax with easy to learn rules and convert it into Go structs. Now we'll be using those structs to build an EPUB and standalone HTML website so that your readers can enjoy your interactive fiction. Let's get started. So to demo making an EPUB in Go, I've made a few changes. I've added at the bottom of main.go, our convert to EPUB function. And that's defined over in converter EPUB. So we have package converter. We are using the Go Shiori Go EPUB package here. And actually making an example EPUB is as simple as this. So we do EPUB.newEPUB and we give it a title. And that gives us back a book reference or an error. If there's an error, we'll just panic for now. Otherwise, we'll set the author to be my name. We'll add a section. And the section method definition is the body that you want in the section and then the section title. It can also have an internal file name and optionally internal CSS as well. And it also returns a string or an error. We're not going to handle that right now. Uh, the string it returns would be the internal ID. Uh, the error could be any reason that there was an error. And then finally, we write out to output.epub. Uh, so what is an EPUB anyway? Well, let's, let's run this and find out. We'll do go run cmd squire main.go. And we have to give it our path to our uh, markdown that we want to convert. So we'll do package and then parser test data valid.md. Okay, and it says it's valid, and it should have generated an output.epub, and it did. So let's just open that up in Vim. Okay, so what we see here is that we're in a zip file. So an EPUB is actually an archive of XHTML, maybe some images, maybe some CSS, but mostly it's this XHTML. It also has some stuff around like a table of contents, uh, and then sort of describing the package and there's a manifest and all that sort of stuff. But the gist of it is, if we look at uh, section one here, we see that it has the title that we provided, first section. If we look over here, we see that on line 16. And then it has our body, which is hello world. And we see that also being set on 16. So all the different files basically get zipped up into this one thing, which is an EPUB. And EPUB readers know how to read that archive and to use the table of contents and all the other files to help you get to where you want to go. There are a couple of tools I want to look at real quick uh, so we know more about EPUBs and how to view them locally and that sort of thing. The first one is EPUB check, and we'll just provide it with the path to our EPUB. EPUB check uh, runs all the EPUB version rules and makes sure that your file is valid. And here it is, everything looks good there. Ebook viewer is a handy tool that comes installed with Calibre. What you can do with it is just get a quick look at an ebook. So we'll run that there. If your setup is like mine, you actually end up with this error message about the Qt web engine render process crashing. So I'm just going to say OK to that and then quit. So for me, I need to run it with a special environment variable which disables the Qt web engine sandbox. And so now I can do ebook viewer and then our output file and what we see here is we have hello world and another text and so world it may be a little hard to see here but is actually bold so the htmlification is working as intended and we have our two page ebook the last tool that i want to show you is kindle previewer kindle previewer is very useful because it gives you the most accurate view of how your ebook will look on a kindle it unfortunately does this at the cost of being quite slow to parse and render the ebook. Let's take a look at what our output looks like. This takes a moment. Okay, so we end up with this. We're gonna swap from tablet device type to Kindle e-reader. So with these tools at our disposal, we're ready to turn our story into an EPUB. The last piece of the puzzle before we can convert our stories into EPUBs is understanding how to link between chapters. So this is where our choices come to life and make a difference. We can do this by adding in a simple HTML link and then just crafting it to uh, go to the correct place. 
So we'll make this a P tag. We'll add in an A. The href is going to be second section dot xhtml. And we'll call this some choice goes here. Great. And we can do the similar thing down here. And we'll copy that. And it's going to go to be uh, first, first section and start over. Now, the last thing that we need to do is to look at our add section signature and see that the third argument is the internal file name. So for this one, we want it to be second section. So this internal file name needs to match up with where this A tag goes. So the first section links to the second section. And then what that means is the first section needs to be called first section. Okay, so we'll regenerate our document. Then we will preview our document again. And now we can see that we have linked choices. So some choice goes here, takes us to another text, uh, the second section, and then we can go back to the beginning. Awesome. Now we can start converting our story into EPUB. We'll hop up here and we're going to take our story as an argument. And yeah, I like the idea of returning an error here rather than panicking. So let's go ahead and do that. Down here, uh, let's see, book.write can return an error. So we can just return that. Excellent. Okay. So what is the title of our story? The title of our story is story.title. Likewise, the author is story.author. And then for our sections, we'll want to iterate over the chapters. So for each of our chapters, we will do something like that. That's not exactly right. Uh, let's see, body is gonna be our first argument and we'll assemble that as we go. So that will be a variable. Chapter.title makes sense here. Uh, this part we know needs to be chapter.id. And yeah, let's start to get our body together. We'll start off with the chapter title, that's excellent. And then we can say, hmm, the, we'll want to add in our actual chapter body. And that's going to be marked down. So we'll want to convert it to HTML at some point, but we'll, we'll ignore that for now. And then for each of the choices, we will add those as well. So let's see what we end up with here. This is actually great. So the choice, is a link that goes to the choices chapter ID dot xhtml, and then we have the choice text. I think this will work. We'll recon. Ah, we do need to update our main. So over in main, we want to pass in our story here. And I guess we should handle the errors. So we'll say error is going to be that. And if the error is not nil, let's print that out. Let's see if there are any other errors. Okay, the return value of add section is not checked. No problem. Uh, we get actually like an ID and an error here. So we'll just deal with the error. We don't need the ID. Okay. Looks good. So over here, we'll regenerate our story. And now we will re-preview it. And we'll do the preview. And this is looking good. So as we said, there's still markdown in here. That should be HTML, but we can click on our choices and things happen. And there's our win scenario. Looking good. Let's do our EPUB check on the output to make sure this still looks good. That's great. And then we'll go to our Kindle previewer. All right, and that looks pretty good as well. Let's convert this over to Kindle e-reader. And one thing that we notice is, yes, we have marked down that we want to convert to HTML, but our choices are kind of just dumped in here. The problem with that is if we have a font size that's closer to nine, then this happens. The choices get cut off. And since you don't read these style books linearly, uh, you might think there's only one choice here, or let's see, maybe an eight, no, nope, there's, all three choices there, but it's possible that you only see two out of three or two out of 10 or whatever. So what we would like to do is to introduce some CSS here to highlight our choices so that it's more clear where they start and end. 
OK, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to make a new directory to store our assets in. These assets are going to be bundled in with our binary. So we will edit this default EPUB styles.css, and we'll start with these styles. So we'll give our UL a choices class, and then this will surround and pad the choices to make it more clear what's going on. So let's hop back over here. And all we need to do is to change this to be, instead of paragraphs, we'll make it a UL. So if len of chapter out choices is greater than zero, body is going to be UL class choices. Great. Pull that in, close that off. And then we just need to change this. So this will be li and li. So that gives our UL the right class. Now we need to actually pull in our CSS. So we will do this with a magic comment and pull in the embed import. And so now we're able to reference that file so we can edit it just as normal CSS, but it gets compiled into our Go binary. And we'll have a function which is CSS content. And that is close to what we want, but we actually want to embed this as base64 uh, to make the EPUB happy. We'll do this, and that's not exactly right either. We want base64. Standard encoding, encode to string. There we go. That looks better. OK. And then how do we use that? Well, down here, what we can do is book.addcss. And we give it a source. And we can give it an internal file name. I'm going to choose not to do that. And we'll use the file name that it gives us. So the source is going to be CSS content. And we won't pass that in. We'll just do blank string. And this can return a string and an error. So we'll say CSS path and error are going to be that. And of course, if there's an error, we'll just return that. OK, so CSS path is unused. Uh, if we go down to add section, we can see that the fourth argument here is an internal CSS path. So we can pass that in as our CSS path. And let's give it a try. We regenerate our EPUB, and we preview our EPUB. And we briefly saw it there. OK, so these are now surrounded. Let's see how this looks in our Kindle Previewer. So Kindle Previewer does not automatically update. But if you go up to the File menu and open Recent, you can click on the one you've recently viewed. And this takes a moment. OK, much better. So now we see over here, OK, we've got a box that has started, but it's not finished. So we know that this next page is going to have the remainder of our choices. For the ones that fit nicely on a page, it's very clear what's going on there. This makes it a lot more obvious to the reader where the choices begin and end. Now we want to convert our inner markdown to HTML so that our text within our book can use markdown formatting. To do this, we'll use the Goldmark library. The Goldmark library is a fantastic library for converting markdown to HTML. And it has some nice add-ons that we can use as well. We're going to come down here and copy this example where we're initializing a new Goldmark instance. And over in our code, we will have a func new markdown converter. And we'll paste this in here. We'll just return this. OK. Uh, we don't want the parser options. The reason it's complaining here is that the Goldmark parser is conflicting with our parser. So we actually don't need that anyway, so we'll just strip that out. Uh, we also don't want the hard wraps. So I think that looks good. Uh, let's see, what error do we have? Right, we need to import these. So we'll do go mod tidy. Great. And now the problem is that we have too many return values. So we'll just throw that in here. Great. Awesome. OK. So uh, what we want to do, basically, is just to HTMLify this body. So markdown to HTML. And we'll give it our MD instance that we'll initialize up here. Great. OK, so now we need to find what markdown to HTML is. That's easy enough. 
func markdown to HTML. It's going to look something like that, but hmm. we can't use HTML because what it actually wants is a bytes buffer. So let's do this. This will be buff. And then this will be buff to string. Let's see if we got any issues. Okay, the error value of MD convert is not checked. Right. So this can return an error, which means that our function also needs to support returning an error. And what we can do then is if we have an error, we'll return blank string in the error. Otherwise, we'll return this and nil. Okay. So now what we need to do is to deal with the too many return values here. So we'll say MD body error is going to be that. Easy enough. No issues there. So let's try it out. We'll regenerate and we'll open our preview. Awesome. So we can immediately see that this is bold and that's great. And then this was our italics. And so that's also being converted to HTML, which means that it's going to read beautifully in here. Many interactive fiction stories include images to help bring the story to life. We want to support images in our story as well, so we'll do that now. I've updated our valid.md to include two images, a ringing phone and a meteor. If we generate our story again and we preview it, we see that the images are broken. And this is because we have not embedded those images within the ebook. They're just this dangling reference. They don't automatically get slurped in. So we could do a couple things here. We could parse the markdown, find the files, add all the files to the EPUB as we go, get a reference for those files so that we can properly insert them into there. Or maybe we don't have to have a reference. Gosh, I don't know. It starts to get a little complicated and it would be easier if we could just embed them as we go as base64 encoded data. It turns out there's a really nice Goldmark plugin to do this, so we'll be doing that. If you scroll down to the bottom of the Goldmark GitHub page, you'll see that there are a number of extensions. The one that we care about is this one right here, Goldmark Image64. And what it does is embeds local images as Base64 encoded data. This is perfect for our use case. We can see an example of how it works here. The real trick is that our with extensions needs to include this, and then our with render options needs to support the with parent path because we won't always be rendering a file that's in the current working directory. So we're just gonna grab both of these and we'll hop back over in our code. All right, so the with render options one is this one. So we're gonna need a directory now. We'll pass that in in a minute. And the with extensions is going to be this. Okay, put a comma on that. All right, so uh, root deer is going to be a string. And then we'll just change that to be root deer. Great. Um, we don't have that import, so we'll do our go mod tidy. Okay, and that is now installed. All right, so we need to pass in root deer, otherwise this is going to error out. So what we want to do is to get the root directory of the file that we're processing. So let's pass in the root deer here as a string and then root deer here. And so what that means is we need to update our main. And so what we can say is root directory is going to be not that, we actually want file path dot deer and then the file name. We will now rebuild and view. And that looks better. We have an image here. Uh, if we jump into nearby lion's mouth and then pick up our backpack, we get this nice comet picture, a 
or sorry, Meteor, I should say. Let's see how it looks in the Kindle Previewer. This looks pretty good, but I think we can do a little better. Let's center the image to make it a little cleaner. Okay. So uh, centering the image is about as easy as updating our CSS. So let's give that a try. We'll just do image and we'll give it a margin, zero auto and display block. Let's try this again. And we'll go back to the beginning. That looks better. And if we check our previewer, that looks pretty good too. Let's bump our font down to about four. Much better. I like it. Okay, so one thing that we do need to do is to update our tests because they're going to be grumpy that we've made changes to the markdown. Uh, they were previously making different assertions. So here, we expected it without the image and we got it with the image. So this should be pretty easy to update. So we'll just grab that and then hop over here. So let's see, that looks better. Let's run that again. Okay, so now we're failing on the Meteor one, which is fine right here. and we're passing again. Great. It's worth noting that this inlining of images won't work on remotely hosted images. Uh, so we may need to do some rewriting later, but in the meantime, this will work. So let's jump into the HTML version of things. Our HTML generation is going to be pretty straightforward since the EPUB version is XHTML. We can reuse a lot of the same approaches. We'll want to do some refactoring here. Uh, but we're going to start by changing this to always do HTML. Later, we'll introduce some command line flags to let you select which output version you want. But for now, to simplify our lives, we'll just do HTML. Over in our EPUB, we're going to start doing some refactoring. We'll extract some methods that will be useful for both the HTML version and the EPUB version. So alongside converter, we'll just do uh, shared dot go, which is not a great name, but that's okay. And let's start seeing what we can pull out. We're not going to embed the CSS the same way. We'll have our own CSS for, we can pull out our new markdown converter function and our markdown to HTML function. Those are both useful. Okay, so that does it for the pure functions that we pull out, but obviously there's some content here that feels very HTML. -y. Here's a good example. So we'll just call this title and do chapter.title. And then over in our shared, we will just make a font title. It's going to take a story of parser.story and return a string. We'll just do that. Oh, sorry. Actually, this is the chapter, isn't it? And that'll be parser.chapter. Great. Uh, let's see what we got here. Right. We'll do that. Um, okay, so then we start assembling our choices. So we'll have a func choices, which is going to take a chapter. And sorry, Copilot, I did not mean to just blindly accept that. Uh, so we'll extract this. Actually, let's get the surrounding conditional to. So let's we'll say body plus equals choices for the chapter. That seems good. So up here we can do this. Okay, we'll do body. It's going to be that. And then we'll just rename this to choice HTML. Cool. Now, this is going to be interesting because in the standalone web version, we're not going to link to an XHTML file. We're just going to link directly to the ID. So what we're going to actually call this is, we'll call this uh, suffix plus that. And so suffix then is just going to be passed in as a string.
And for the HTML version, we're actually going to have a prefix, which is a string. And the prefix for the EPUB version is blank, which is fine. Uh, and we'll just do that here. OK. So we just need to return choice HTML there. And I think that's good. I realize because we changed our main, we can't easily regression test this. Uh, we don't actually have a automated test, but we want to manually test this. So let's just do that real quick. So we will regenerate and we will open the viewer. Pull that back over here. OK, so the images are still coming across. The text and content are coming across. And our choices are coming across. Awesome. Still looks good. So back over here, we will now uh, change that back to the HTML version. We'll close shared. We will open EPUB uh, just so we can get the basic shape of this. So we're just going to do a convert to HTML. OK, so I think we're going to follow a similar approach here. Let's just copy this. And we'll have an HTML.go. We'll put this in here. So it's going to be package converter. So we HTML. I think one thing that we want is we're going to want styles. So instead of EPUB styles, these will be HTML styles. And we'll call this HTML CSS. And we need to do embed. All right, so there's no matching files found there. That's fine. Let's go ahead and make an empty version of that. So in CSS, we'll just open this up and do default HTML styles.css. And we'll just save it as an empty file for now. OK, so now our error has gone away. All right, so what we want to do here is instead of generating an EPUB, we're just going to generate the HTML code. So I'm going to paste this in and We'll start with our doc type or HTML. We have a head that has a meta that specifies for UTF-8. It puts in our story title and opens our body tag. We'll get rid of that. Um, we will then add in this, which makes a lot of sense. We'll get our style tag. That is in the body, though, so that's kind of weird. Actually, let's just fix that. So now we'll get the body going. Whoops, <laughs> we need to also uh, not close off our head. So perfect. OK, um, so we have our CSS now. We have our HTML opening the body, which is great. Uh, body is weird here because HTML has its own concept of body. So we'll call this chapter HTML. Call this MD chapter body chapter text. Uh, and then so for chapter HTML, we're not going to have the suffix. Instead, we're just going to have the pound sign. And rather than adding the section and everything, all that we need to do is say HTML plus equals chapter HTML. And we'll return HTML. And that's a problem because right now we're just returning an error. Uh, right. So actually, we don't want to do that. Uh, we'll return nil and we'll do close off that and we'll do a right. And that seems reasonable for now. Uh, so let's just return that. I think we're going to change the signature later, but for now, we'll stick to this. All right, let's give this a try. So we'll generate it. And now we have an HTML file to open. OK, that's not bad to start out with. Obviously, the problem here is you can see the entire document at once, which isn't what we want. Let's just view the source and make sure nothing jumps out at us here. OK, so we don't have any styles. That's understandable. We left that file blank. But overall, I think this looks pretty good. We are still inlining our images, which is fine for now. Uh, yeah, let's add some CSS and some JavaScript to make this interactive. OK, so after we import our 
CSS, we will actually also want to import some JavaScript. Assets, default, HTML, interactivity.js, perfect. And this will be var html.js, which is fine. That file doesn't exist yet. We'll make it in a minute. Uh, what we can do, though, is go ahead and include it here. So we'll do that looks good. We're also going to give our content an ID just to help us target things a little better and to make it easier for you as the consumer to copy and paste this into another HTML document and have like surrounding content if you want. So we'll just give this a div with an ID so that we're not targeting the body directly. So we'll do a div. We'll say ID is going to be story. And then we'll just want to close off that div down here. We'll do it after the script just because I feel like that is a cleaner way to do it. And now that I think about that, I think it does make sense to actually move our style down into our body. And then doing that, we can do this off and we'll move it actually into our story rather. So uh, what we'll do is we will hop over to our CSS and we'll make a new file next to it, which is default HTML interactivity.js. And we'll just save the empty file there. All right, so that may, now we're happy here. Uh, this is going to not be meaningfully different, but we'll just take a look at it anyway. Okay. Uh, so if we look at our structure, we see that yes, now everything is within the ID, including our script. All right, so HTML, check. Now we just need the CSS and the JavaScript. So I'm going to paste in a whole bunch of JavaScript here that I've previously written, rather than writing this line by line with and making you watch. Uh, the gist is, this is something I actually wrote a while back, because my own website is a choose your own adventure story. Uh, it's actually the one that I've published. Uh, so you can go read it there if you'd like. The gist is this, we expose a Squire object, which has some functions to clear, to show a section, and to visit a section. We add an event listener so that when the hash changes, that's the pound sign and then the anchor on the URL, that we visit the page that is indicated by that. So on line 27, you can see that we're going to start with intro. That's actually something that shouldn't be hard coded, so we should deal with that. We'll call this hmm, or window dot initial chapter ID. Perfect. And so when we visit that, what we do is we clear everything out and then we show the section that's specified. So clear is just going to remove all the active classes and scroll back up to the top. And then show section will make the new section active. And it also makes its siblings active unless they're a script. Uh, anyway, you can read this at your leisure. So then for the CSS side of things, it's going to look pretty simple. We're just going to, within our story, have a display none on everything, but the active things are display block. So if we look at our HTML converter now. This is where our ID of story comes in. Hopefully all of this just works. So the one thing we do need to do is within our script tag, we're going to set window dot initial chapter ID equals, and then we'll just quote this. So plus oops, that that should really be using some templates here, but later. And this will be story dot chapters zero dot ID. I think that looks right. Let's try it out. So we reload and nothing shows up. So that's a problem. Okay, so the problem here is that we did not give our 
H1s, the ID that they need. So we don't know what intro is, even though it's our initial chapter ID, we don't know where the other things are. So let's make a quick update to that. We hop over into our HTML. Uh, we see that these are all titles, so we can just throw this on the title itself. So the ID is going to be chapter.id. Okay, let's give that a try. We'll reload this and we see that we do have our IDs now. Excellent. If we reload the page, still nothing working. Let's look at our inspector. Okay, the element is null. And the element is coming from here. So let's just see what we're looking at with our JavaScript. L we know is undefined, but what is ID? ID is also undefined because window.initialChapterID is undefined. Ah, this is an immediately executing function. So we need to move that to the top. Not a problem. We'll just do this. Uh, we'll grab this bit and then do close that off over here. We can paste this in, do a little bit of cleanup here, and we'll just make that and there we go. Let's try that again. All right. So let's break down here instead. And now we have an ID, so we can get the element by the ID. Remove this, and here we go. So I'll bump this font up a little bit. Uh, we'll reload, and we can pick up the phone. Your grandmother, you die, start over. Jump to a nearby lion's mouth. Hey, hey, it works. So now we have our HTML version and our EPUB version. The last thing that we want to do is to make it so in the main.go, we take a command line flag, which lets you specify the version that you want. For our flag parsing, we're going to use SPF 13's pflag library. I prefer this to the built-in go flag parsing because it feels more Unix-y. So at the top of our main.go, we will add this in and we'll start parsing flags. So we'll say that the format is going to be Flag.string e. Let's see what this looks like. Hmm. Let's go mod tidy to get this installed. Okay. So string p is like string, but except a shorthand letter that can be used after a single dash. Perfect. Okay. So this is defaulting the format to HTML. We actually don't want to do that. Um, and otherwise, this is good. We will also say output file name is going to be that. And that also looks good. Okay, so we have these two flags that we're not using yet, and that's fine. We still want to parse everything. We still want to get all the errors. We'll get rid of this is valid. So we'll say if format is not nil and Actually, let's just simplify this. If star format is not blank, then we will convert the story with the file name and the format and the output file name. Excellent. We can get rid of that. So now we just want to define our convert function. Funk convert. Thank you, Copilot, but give me a moment. All right, so we still want to get our root deer. Uh, so we'll say switch, and we'll do this on the format. So in the case of EPUB, what we want to do is convert to EPUB. Okay, so right now we're not dealing with the output file name, but we'll get to that in a moment. Case HTML is going to be this. And I think that's okay.
Okay. So we've got an unused param here that we do know about, and that's fine. If we change these functions to return bytes instead of writing to a file, we could sort of centralize writing to our output file name. So let's do that. We'll hop over in here. This is going to return byte array and error. So here we can just do byte. Down here, we can do the same. Same thing. And then same thing. All right, so here what we want actually is, hmm, we'll say var bytes is a byte buffer. And so we'll do a write to on the buff and this can return an error. Right, and, or the, and the number of bytes written. So we'll return buff bytes error there. And that looks good. We do have a warning though. Right, so that error is gonna shadow. There we go. Perfect. All right, so over in the HTML side of things, we'll do something similar, which is to change this to be byte and error. And now we just have to fix all the issues. So this is going to be byte. And then here, rather than writing to a file, what we want to do is to return that. No more errors, I think we're good. So over in our main.go, we need to update this. So we'll have some bytes, bar, bytes, it's gonna be bytes. So we're signing it, but we're not using it. Okay, so if there is no error, then if the output file name is blank, Hmm. Printing it out as a string feels like a pretty good Unixy thing to do, right? That way we could use it in a pipe. Hmm. Let's go with that for now. Otherwise, we write out the file name. Uh, and if there's an error doing that, we exit. Otherwise, we're good. Let's just do uh, linting here and see if everything looks okay. Exit code zero, we're good. There's one more thing we forgot to do here, and that is to add in our flag.parse. Without that, our flags aren't going to get parsed, so we won't be able to use them. So now if we run our command against the valid markdown, it's not going to have any output. The file is valid, but there's nothing to say about it. If we do our invalid, we're going to get our errors. If we do our valid and we specify our format of HTML, we'll say format is HTML and output is example.html we're going to get an example.html file, which is awesome. So if we come over here, we'll just change this to example.html. And this works as expected. Awesome. If we change this to be EPUB, and swap this to be EPUB. example.epub, rather, we can now do this on example.epub. And that also looks good. Just for giggles, we can also uh, specify the format of HTML and no output. And this should dump it all out to the terminal. It does. So you could do this in this way and be like, uh, you know, my story.html, or you could pipe it through any other number of things that you would like to because it's all Unix, baby. So cat my story.html, and it looks good. We talked a good bit about inlining the HTML into your own website. So you can kind of, you know, design the layout as you wish. So why don't we actually make that a first class citizen? So over here, we can do inline HTML, HTML, or EPUB. And so then all we need to do is have another switch here. So case inline HTML is going to be convert to HTML, and we'll just give this a true and give this a false, right? So now both of those are grumpy. So what we'll do is just say inline is a bool. 
So HTML is going to be blank if not in line. Then we'll add that. Otherwise, we start with the story ID, which I think we do want to start with. And then I think we just want to close this off. Let's try this format it is going to be inline HTML. We'll pipe that into more. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> We got a issue to deal with here. There we go. Let's try that again. Okay, so now we start off with our story div. We have our intro, we have our inline image, which goes on for a bit as it turns out. Uh, but eventually we get to our other content and then the backpack inline image. And then at the bottom we have our HTML. And so, Do inline.html here and just look at exactly what this looks like in the browser. This is grumpy because it expected to start with a doc type or an HTML tag or something like that, and we didn't give it one, but that's the goal with the inline HTML. So we've got support for that now too. We did not TDD the development of this conversion, but I have added some tests to help prevent regressions and to allow us to refactor. So we'll just take a very brief look at those. Uh, basically, we have a test for converting a story to HTML here. We read the valid.md, we parse it, we convert it to HTML, uh, not inline, and then we look at a known good HTML conversion and we just compare it. Very straightforward. We have another test for the same thing, but with the inner HTML version. I don't have a test for the EPUB version because the EPUB has some non-deterministic content inside of it that's sort of randomized and like time stampy, those sorts of things. I'll probably add a test for that later, but uh, you can sort of leave that to your imagination for now. Once these are in place, we can run our tests and you see that they all pass and that's great. Um, and we'll just briefly break them just for giggles. Uh, so here we'll do plus and then a new line, hello. And as you can see, uh, the original is missing. Hello, and the new one has it, perfect. Okay, so with this in place, we can do a little bit of refactoring here just to clean this up. So I'm gonna hop over into HTML and in the places where we're doing things like this and doing a whole bunch of escaping and that sort of thing, we're just gonna replace these with some uh, sprint Fs. Okay, so fmt.sprintf and we're going to hop over to this percent s we will delete up until this for now and then we can add in story title we'll rerun our test everything still passes down here this one feels fine it's not as awkward uh let's see this one feels a little awkward so we'll do ft.sprintf here as well and here we can do percent s. And then percent s again. And so these are going to be that. I think that's right. Just look at the before. Yeah, so story chapter zero ID string HTML JS. Perfect. And we can make sure the tests agree with us. And they do. And then the last thing we will just do is in the shared, we can fix up things like this. So fmt.sprintf. You guessed it. Hop over here. Hop over here. And so we check our D chapter title. Yep. And then down here is, I think our, yep, that's our last one. So it will do same thing here. Okay, so we're gonna add three things here. Great, we're gonna add those in here.
Uh huh. And then choice.txt is the last thing. So all right. And if we did things correctly, we're good to go. After I spent a little bit of time thinking about the approach that I'm using in main.go, I actually realized I don't like it. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Because basically the way things work, it's going to be Squire and then the file name and then this. And the problem here is that This sort of implies the verb. So we have our noun. We're acting on this. Uh, the verb is convert. It is implied by the fact that there is a format. The output file name is optional. But I think what I really want is something like squire convert, then the file name, and then optionally flags for specifying what the conversion should do. This nicely opens itself up to things like squire validate, squire play, those sorts of things. So I'm going to make that change in another video though, and we're just gonna leave it as is for now. Remember folks, there's always another chance to improve. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more content like it, please give it a like and subscribe. Comments are welcome below, and check the description to learn more about the squire book format. In the next episode, we'll be cleaning up our commands in main.go to make things more ergonomic and usable. And then in a future episode, we'll be writing an interactive fiction player so that you can play stories right in the terminal. Till next time.